Okay, uh, I think it's time we can start. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to uh, welcome everyone on this meeting. Uh, and today we will discuss uh, the technical part of that question. If it's possible to get data from areas where the GSM network is unavailable. What can we do? Which solution we can provide you? And uh, all this stuff. So, uh, okay. Please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Dmitry. I'm a Galileo Sky project engineer. Uh, this meeting uh, should take about one hour. Uh, so you can ask your questions here in chat. And we also have a special, here, here it is. We have special uh, question tabs. So you can ask your questions uh, during the meeting. And uh, at the end of the meeting, I'll try to uh, answer all your questions. But I hope uh, during this meeting, during my presentation, uh, I will ask, uh, I will uh, actually answer all these questions uh, during my presentation. So I think uh, we can start. So uh, basically, what we were talking about uh, Galileo Sky devices, uh, at least some of them, are equipped with the Wi Fi, uh, wi -fi communication channel. So it means that uh, Galileo Sky devices can work not only with the JSM uh, channel, but also can work uh, via the Wi-Fi channel, uh, which uh, gives us quite interesting opportunities. And I will show you how does it work. Yeah, here it is. Uh, this, our guide, this is the device that uh, allows us to work in areas with no uh, JSM uh, area. Uh, coverage area. This is uh, Galileo Sky 7X Wi-Fi hub. Uh, this is actual, uh, actually the same 7X device that you are all, I believe, familiar with. Uh, it, have, they say it has the same features, uh, the same interfaces, uh, but it also equipped with the uh, Wi-Fi module, which uh, allows this device to work via the Wi-Fi channel. So, uh, the interesting thing about uh, the Galileo Sky uh, Wi-Fi devices is that they can upload data not only via the JSM channel, but also via the Wi-Fi channel. And uh, here at this screen, you should see different scheme of how the device can uh, send the data via the Wi-Fi. So the basic, the simplest approach is to actually uh, in the device settings, I will lay later. I will show you all the settings. Uh, in the device settings, you can uh, like <laughs> write uh, parameters of your uh, local uh, Wi-Fi access point. And uh, in this case, Galileo Sky Wi-Fi Hub Wi-Fi device can connect to this existing Wi-Fi access point and upload data, not via the uh, GPRS channel, not via the GSM, but uh, via the Wi-Fi channel. Uh, in some cases, when uh, your equipment works in areas where just uh, network network is unavailable, uh, sometimes it's easier to provide uh, some sort of internet. It might be wired internet, it might be satellite internet, uh, and create the access point for uh, for equipment that uh, devices could upload data to the monitoring software. So it's like a simplest approach. All uh, Galileo Sky devices equipped, equipped with the Wi-Fi model uh, can be set in the client mode and upload data via the existing Wi-Fi wi uh, network. Uh, but uh, what can we do if uh, such Wi-Fi network is available in this particular area? It can be mine, it can be uh, some areas uh, like building building areas, it can be, uh, I don't know, uh, forest manufacturing areas, uh, all this stuff. So what can we do in this case? Uh, usually when you have such areas where the, uh, your vehicles are constantly presented, uh, when they doing the job in this area, and when in this area the GSM network is unavailable. <laughs> in Russia we have uh, too many such areas, so uh, maybe that's why we have this solution. Uh, what can we do? Usually uh, in this area uh, we have some specific vehicles that are moving uh, to this area and from this area from time to time. It can be bus that uh, uh, drives or workers to this area uh, at the end, end of the day or something like this. It can be refueling vehicles uh, that uh, move fuel to uh, vehicles that work in this area. 
So at least some communication uh, with the uh, with the area with uh, GPS or sorry with uh, GSM coverage or Wi-Fi coverage. Uh, usually we have such opportunities. So what can we do? Uh, usually in this case, uh, all those vehicles that uh, are constantly in the area with no uh, GSM coverage. Uh, they usually equipped with the uh, Galileo Sky 7X uh, Wi-Fi devices uh, that are set in the client mode. What does it mean? It means that they are constantly searching for the uh, opportunity to upload the data to the server. And uh, this vehicle that uh, moves from time to time to this area, uh, this vehicle is equipped with the same 7X Wi-Fi device. And this device uh, work in the hub mode. Uh, what does it mean? The hub mode means that uh, this device can be uh, like a server for this uh, for all for all these clients. Uh, this hub device can collect data and for these clients it's like uh, some sort of server, some sort of monitoring software. So this hub device it collects all data from uh, these clients uh, and then later uh, there are several possibilities. Uh, for example, uh, the vehicle can, like, if you all vehicles in this area, if it's this referring station, can uh, give fuel for all vehicles at the same time and collecting uh, archive from all clients, and then uh, it moves so in, in, in some area where the GSM network is available. In this case, uh, the hub device, it automatically uh, uploads all his own archive and it also uploads uh, the data from clients archives so uh, all this logic all this like magic uh, is inside the hub device so you don't need uh, some specific software you don't need uh, specific servers uh, for the server the situation looks like uh, at first the hub device is connected to the server it uploads all the data and then disconnects from the server after that, in several seconds, uh, the first client is connected to the server, it uploads the data and disconnect again. So all this logic uh, of uploading client's data is inside the hub device. You can use uh, your own, your software, uh, if this software can work with the Galileo Sky protocol, if this software uh, supports uh, Galileo Sky devices, it means that you can use uh, this uh, client hub uh, Wi-Fi solution. Uh, we can have different situations. For example, uh, hub device can also uh, be in the area where the uh, where the GSM network is available. In this case, uh, it still uh, have to move somewhere in the base where it also can uh, get the fuel for fueling all these vehicles and. Uh, Sorry, so I see in chat that someone have issues with the, can hear me. Can you hear me? Is it okay with the sound? Okay, nice. So please check your equipment because everyone can hear me. It's sounding wrong. Okay, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Nice. So, uh, uh, the second approach is when the uh, when the uh, uh, device, uh, this hub device, is not in the GSM area. Uh, in this case, you can uh, create on the, your base uh, again some sort of Wi-Fi access point, and the hub device can automatically uh, switch to the uh, client mode and again upload the data via the uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, we have the existing Wi-Fi network. Again, it's on, on one, one of the solution. And usually, uh, in, in practice, we usually see uh, the last scheme, the bottom scheme that you see on this page, uh, like several clients, uh, they upload, connect, connect to the uh, hub device, upload the data uh, to the hub device, and then uh, the hub device uh, uploads all archives via the existing network. It can be GPRS connection, it can be Wi-Fi connection. And the internal logic of the Wi-Fi hub device is the following. When the, uh, actually all Wi-Fi devices is the following. When the GPRS network is available, the device is trying to upload the data via the GPRS uh, channel. And when uh, it finds the Wi-Fi access point, uh, 
uh, that he uh, this device knows the login and password. It connects to the Wi-Fi and upload data via the Wi-Fi because usually Wi-Fi is faster, Wi-Fi is uh, cheaper, and so on. So Wi-Fi has the highest priority. So uh, again, we can have different schemes. Uh, <laughs> Do not forget that it's still the same device. It's uh, it's still the same 7x uh, Wi-Fi hub device, which can be switched between clients and hub modes. And uh, again, the data can be sent uh, from uh, areas where the uh, GPRS connection is unavailable. Uh, you still can uh, get this data from devices. So. Uh, some small practical uh, thing about this. Uh, usually, clients asking about the, uh, how long does it take to get archive from the client to the hub. And uh, according to our experience, if vehicles like close enough, uh, like five meters or ten meters, uh, it three thousand points uh, usually takes about five or six minutes to download. So. Uh, it's quite fast so if we're speaking about the refueling, uh, the refueler vehicle, uh, the data uh, send process, the sending process is uh, shorter than the refueling process. So, uh, in most cases, uh, you just don't have any issues with the timing. You just uh, use your vehicle the same way. You don't need to ask your client to work some specific way to uh, get all the data from the clients. Uh, just they just uh, work the same way as they usually do, and uh, the devices will automatically connect to each other, upload the data, and later you will get this information from the uh, on on your software. Uh, it's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is that uh, 7x Wi-Fi device uh, that is works like a hub device which collects the client data. It must be equipped with the micro SD card. And this is a quite a specific moment because <clears throat> the quality of the micro SD card uh, is actually crucial because uh, if you, uh, if this micro SD card is damaged, if it uh, broken during the, this process of extracting the data, you can lose all the data. So we uh, strongly advise to uh, use micro SD card uh, industrial, uh, industrial type of micro SD cards because such sort of micro SD cards they are, uh, they are more expensive but uh, they actually were designed to work in these uh, conditions because all you know in which conditions usually our equipment works it can be uh, temperature uh, difference it can be vibrations uh, uh, voltage difference from time to time. So uh, all these uh, conditions, they are not good for the micro SD card health and usual a micro SD card that can be bought in any shop or around your home. Uh, they are just, were not created for such conditions. So please be careful with uh, micro SD cards. It's better to uh, buy uh, maybe more expensive, but still uh, micro SD cards with high quality. Because on the other hand, you just you just can lose all your data and it's, in most cases it's just, just unacceptable for your client. So again, please be careful with, with the micro SD card because the micro SD card quality is crucial. So, uh, what else, what else? Yeah, about the settings. So as I've said, uh, it is always the same device. It is always the device. Uh, physically, uh, all devices can work like uh, clients and like access point, and all only difference in the device settings. Uh, basically, uh, here you, you can see examples of settings for the client and for the access point. Uh, <laughs> at the first glance, you can see that they are quite similar. So uh, basically, we have uh, Wi-Fi settings for both devices. And uh, they are the same like uh, is, uh, if you're connecting your phone uh, to the existing Wi-Fi access point. So you need to uh, type here your SSID, uh, authentication type, password, and for the client, you're setting the client mode. So um, basically, these settings is enough for, uh, for the case when your uh, client device just have to connect to the existing access point. Uh, when you have like Wi-Fi router uh, to which the device can connect, uh, you just need to set here your uh, server a port 
and then the device will automatically collect connect to this existing access point and upload the data to the server. It's like a simplest approach, but it's still uh, quite useful in cases when the GSM network is unavailable. Because uh, I know some of our clients, some of our partners who works with the uh, satellite, uh, you know, the satellite internet, and they, again, they have Wi-Fi access point, which is available for all devices in the area and devices automatically upload data uh, from the memory uh, to the server. Uh, what about clients? Uh, usually we, uh, in like uh, usual conditions, uh, device internal memory in most cases enough for at least one week of independent work. So uh, if uh, your clients uh, have chance to upload the data to the server at least once per, uh, per one week, uh, you can use uh, internal memory and uh, it's more preferable because uh, internal memory is more reliable. We quite rare uh, see any issues with the internal memory, in most cases very reliable uh, and uh, uh, we strongly advise to use internal memory as the place of uh, storage the data. So if uh, access point, this uh, hub, device Wi-Fi hub, uh, at least once per week is available for clients uh, for the uploading the data. You can uh, set your clients uh, for storing the data to the uh, internal memory. But for the access point, <laughs> again, it's impossible for the access point, uh, you uh, must use a micro SD card. Uh, access point still uh, can store its own data uh, to the internal memory, but client's data is always safe to the uh, micro SD card. So again, please be careful with it. Okay, what, uh, which setting we have to make if uh, we have uh, this, uh, this scheme like uh, Wi-Fi client, Wi-Fi access point, and then access point uploads the data to the server. In this case, uh, the, please again be careful because the settings they were important without the settings uh, the scheme will not work uh, please be careful with these settings uh, so the first thing is that the client uh, as the primary server should have uh, this uh, 192.168.1.1 uh, this IP address should be set for all clients because uh, this IP address uh, usually has access point. It's like pre-install address for uh, in the device firmware uh, and all clients should have uh, this IP address like uh, as the primary server. The secondary server can be uh, your server because uh, in some conditions it's quite possible that uh, your device is still uh, in the same coverage area from time to time and uh, they like have some chances to upload it, their own data, not via the uh, access point, but directly via the GSM channel. So in this case, you can save, uh, set your server here as the secondary one. In this case, the device will uh, try to upload and the data via the GSM channel. And uh, the only issue here is that uh, in some cases you can, uh, you actually can receive the same information uh, two times because for, for uh, the device, these two servers, they are different. The device uh, is always trying to uh, send uh, copies of data to both servers. It should be the same data. Uh, in most cases, it's not an issue because I don't know, for example, the Wyalon, it uh, can like ignore the data, Dublin data, so uh, it shouldn't be an issue. But uh, if you are planning to use the scheme uh, and uh, you're, not, you're not, not really sure about your software, it's better to contact your uh, software support and ask if this uh, scheme is available. It will the server ignore the Dublin data, just to be sure. Okay, but basically, if you want to use the device in the client mode, and this client uh, should connect to the uh, another Wi-Fi device, you have to set here uh, this IP address, and the port should be the same as uh, is set in your software. So, for example, uh, in my case, it's a violon, and the access point will upload it to the violon. Uh, you can see that this port is always the same. Here you can see the uh, settings on the Wyalon. It's like a screenshot from my Wyalon account. Uh, the port is always the same. 
in the client, in the access point, and uh, in the software. Please be careful with, with the port because if some clients uh, have different ports and settings, uh, in this case, uh, it can be an issue. The device will not upload the data to the server. Be careful with the settings. And uh, again, settings are the same. So SSID, access point, and the mode. Uh, the uh, interesting settings here is the period of sending data to the hub. I don't like this uh, <laughs> this uh, title for this parameter because it's uh, not a period, it's like a timeout. Uh, the idea is uh, the following, the, uh, at the one moment uh, to the uh, hub, to the access point, can be connected only one client. And uh, in some cases, it's possible. It's quite possible situation when uh, your hub device in the area where several clients uh, in the connection area can like uh, close enough to upload data to the hub. So in this case, uh, if you set this period low, like I don't know, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, it doesn't matter. Uh, if this period is short, uh, the it's quite possible that the uh, clients can uh, collect the data uh, while they're uploading the, uh, the information and uh, it will always have some data for uploading to the access point and uh, once connected, this client will never uh, disconnect from the device, uh, from the hub device and uh, it will not allow another clients to uh, connect to the access point and upload their archives. So in, for this situation, we have this period of sending data to the hub. Uh, it's again, it's not a uh, period. It's more like uh, it's more like uh, timeout. So, uh, for example, here we can see 120 seconds, seconds, which means two minutes. And uh, in this case, for, with these settings, the device will connect to the access point, uh, upload all the data that were connected and collected in the device memory uh, for the moment of, of connection. This device will upload all his archive, disconnect, and wait for this period, uh, in this case, for 10 minutes before uh, before the new attempt to uh, of connecting to the access point and uploading the, this uh, new archive that was stored in the memory. So, if uh, in your case uh, you know that uh, it's possible, quite possible situation when uh, one access point is in the area with uh, like two, three, five, ten lines. Uh, so it is better to set this period uh, longer, like several hours maybe, uh, because we need to allow own clients uh, to connect to the access point and upload their uh, own data. Uh, there's no issue with it. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to <laughs> explain how this, uh, this parameter works. Uh, obviously for the access point, this parameter is not used. RSA level uh, is uh, the level of the Wi-Fi signal uh, below which the device will not try to connect to the access point. So uh, according to our experience, it's better to set this parameter like 85 or something like this, 85, uh, 90. Uh, so uh, because when RSA is about minus 100, it means that uh, the signal is really poor and the device will never upload. Uh, any data to the access point, so it's better to just don't try to do this because uh, uh, for all this time of this attempt, uh, the access point will be busy, the client will be busy, and uh, it uh, still uh, will not uh, be possible for the device to upload the data. So again, please be careful with it. Uh, okay, about the access point. In case of access point, the settings, they are quite the same. Uh, but the only difference is that we setting this operation mode, access point, archive collection, and the primary server is the software, your address of your server where you actually want to upload the data. Uh, again, please be careful, the port is uh, the same as in your software settings. So actually, uh, this all <laughs> it's all settings that uh, you need to do for your devices. Again, it's quite often situation when uh, when you uh, uh, like make can make 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 mistake with the settings. I saw this <laughs> too many times. So uh, please uh, be careful with settings because. Uh, you can like put space here or space in the name of the access point, and uh, in this case, it, the device will never connect to each other. So 
uh, again, uh, please be careful with settings. But basically, uh, this all settings that should be done uh, to uh, work in this uh, scheme, like client mode, access point mode, and uh, all this stuff. Yeah, uh, here we have some uh, small table. Again, it's uh, received not by us. It's like information from our uh, uh, from our clients, uh, our partners, and they will receive this information will receive in the field in real condition. So you can uh, see that uh, this uh, uh, 7,200 points and settings you can see here in the picture. Uh, it's like uh, took about five or six minutes to upload the data. Uh, so. Uh, as you can see, it's quite fast, and uh, when you're working with the, uh, when the uh, hub works with the existing Wi-Fi access point, the uploading process is also quite fast. It can take like uh, 10 minutes to upload uh, the information uh, from uh, 10 or uh, 15 uh, clients, so it's quite fast. If the signal level is good, uh, we usually have no uh, time issues uh, with uploading data because, again, Wi Fi channel is much faster than uh, GPS channel, and uh, uh, the, when the signal is strong, everything works quite fast. It's, it's quite impressive. Uh, again, according to my experience, when you are connected uh, to the Wi Fi device, which is uh, connected to the uh, uh, Wi-Fi access point when you connect it to this device via the remote configuration uh, via the configuration software you connect it to this device remotely uh, for you it looks like you are connected via the USB cable so it's really fast uh, it's impressive <laughs> and uh, I know uh, I believe <laughs> at least some of us uh, was trying to connect to devices via the GPS channel it can be annoying but in case of Wi-Fi it's really fast so uh, okay about Timing I've set. Uh, yeah, what about antenna? Yeah, because it's quite often uh, clients have issues with uh, the Wi Fi signal because, again, according to uh, my experience, we run so many tests of different Wi Fi antennas. Uh, we wanted to know how far the uh, Wi Fi connection is actually available. According to my experience, so uh, 30 meters is uh, close enough to establish the stable connection and upload data via the Wi-Fi channel. 30 meters is uh, totally okay for devices. At 40 meters, it also can work, but the signal level is close to the uh, the threshold of uh, 80 decibels. But still, uh, uh, still devices can connect, can work, and upload data, and uh, connection is stable. So, but so we have some advice about the installing the antennas because, again, uh, when you uh, like in the open field, it's uh, it's not an issue for the device. But uh, obviously, these devices they will be installed in the vehicle, which like made made in metal, uh, and. Uh, uh, obviously, the signal is lower when your antenna is inside the vehicle, inside the cabin, uh, which is also made from metal, and uh, in this case, it can be a problem. So, we usually advise to uh, set Wi-Fi antennas as high as possible. Uh, understand that it can be a problem, uh, like because if you set your antenna too high in some heavy equipment, this, it can be broken, it can be uh, damaged, and so on. So, but please. Uh, at least try to set the antenna uh, as high as possible uh, so that the, uh, uh, the second device, second antenna, uh, like had like a direct view uh, to each other. Uh, there should be no metal obstacles between antennas. There should be no uh, like two, three surfaces uh, between antennas. Please be careful with the installation because uh, for the Wi-Fi uh, channel, it's quite important to set antennas uh, uh, to set antennas correctly. And uh, one more thing is that uh, antennas, they are polarized because uh, like they send the specific signal and if you have uh, using antennas from the which are uh, in the in the which you receive in the box with the device, uh, they are like sticks, they are the same like a GSM antenna looks the same. So uh, you need to install antennas the same way. For, for example, if you're setting them uh, vertically, like, yeah, I have one, this, uh, oh, 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 I don't want to damage something, sorry. 
give me a second. Uh, yep, where's my antenna? Yeah, give me a second. I will show you. So uh, it's look like the same way. I believe you all saw these antennas. So uh, if you install antennas, uh, like vertically the same way you it's better to install all, all of them uh, the same way because uh, when you uh, one of the antenna is vertical and the second one is horizontal the signal level reduced dramatically or we run this test we saw this I saw this in my own uh, during the test so uh, again please be careful with uh, installing the antennas if you uh, set the antenna vertically uh, place all of them vertically uh, it's quite important and uh, about the micro SD card, I already said that it's uh, really important to choose the correct uh, micro SD card uh, for the, at least for the hub device uh, for which micro SD card is necessary. Uh, we run some tests uh, some time ago, and during this test, we have found like two micro SD cards, industrial sort. Uh, they uh, shown the best results during our test. It was a stress test. It was uh, uh like vibration different voltage uh different uh humidity temperature and so on so uh during this test we have found the two models that which shown uh, the best results so uh it might be uh hard to find these micro sd cards because you know in this all the in all this uh computer shops it's uh Everything changes so fast, but for now, uh, these two models we can recommend. They shown uh, the best results. So uh, at least it's better to use industrial card, uh, industrial uh, class memory cards, uh, to avoid losing the data. Uh, yeah, and about antennas, uh, we uh, like you can uh, choose which antenna you prefer because we have all these models in. Uh, in our access you can we can send uh, these antennas for you uh, the difference is that uh, again this this one is default antenna uh, uh, by default we uh, use these antennas but uh, all these models they are available uh, for you again according to my experience in theory they uh, should a little bit differently but uh, during my test I uh, uh, I haven't seen uh, any dramatic difference between these antennas. So, actually, you can uh, use any of them. There is no uh, big difference between them. Uh, difference is too small to like uh, to to think about it. So you can just uh, choose the antenna that you like more, like <laughs> according to picture. Uh, and uh, uh, in practice, there is no big difference between these antennas. But uh, this one. Uh, GCW uh, point zero zero three. Uh, this one should be installed on the uh, metal surface. You just uh, can like uh, make a hole in the metal surface and uh, install this antenna on the metal surface. In theory, at least according to the description of the manufacturer, uh, uh, it should uh, improve the signal level uh, from this antenna. So you can uh, at least try this. Uh, but again, according to our test, we saw no big difference uh, between uh, these antennas. But still, you can run your own test. Yeah, it can be interesting. Uh, I think we will not uh, start questions for now. We have some time. I wanted to show you. Uh, yeah, I wanted to show you uh, my screen because we have still something to discuss uh okay 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 uh if i'm right you should see my uh, configuration software now uh, please confirm uh, can you see my screen okay perfect thank you so uh now you should see my configuration software and one more thing i wanted to uh show you again about settings uh, here, uh, as you can see, we have uh, two different uh, sorts of settings modes for the uh, Wi Fi device. Again, uh, it's like uh, all the difference between the uh, operation mode as a client and as a, as an access point. Uh, you can uh, 
you can be in the situation when uh, you actually uh, need to the Wi-Fi access point to switch to the client mode. Again, it's quite possible in case that uh, your uh, access point should connect to the existing uh, Wi-Fi access point and uh, work like a client. What can you do in this case? In this case, uh, again, I believe everyone uh, <laughs> actually are used to our answer because our answer is always uh, please use easy, easy logic. Uh, we have uh, we have a sample of algorithm. This algorithm is available on our website. Uh, yeah, I believe I need to show you. Uh, if you are not if you don't know where to find uh, these algorithms, all our uh, algorithms is available on our website. You just go support easy logic templates and uh, check this list of algorithms they are free you just can download this algorithm uh, play with them uh, ask your questions if you need some assistance with this algorithm and you can uh, use these algorithms as a base for your own solution so here is one of the algorithms is it, this algorithm is for uh, changing the uh, wi-fi settings what can we see here uh, i showing this algorithm because uh, it's uh, it's quite important. Uh, it uh, can be used like uh, to download this algorithm, make your settings, and uh, work uh, <laughs> with the Wi-Fi solution with no issues. Uh, here we can see three branches. The first one describes the square uh, geofence. Uh, usually, when you have the local uh, Wi-Fi access point. Uh, it's always in the same place, so you don't need to create GeoFence. Uh, you don't need to create the file with GeoFence. It's easier to uh, describe the single GeoFence, single stable GeoFence uh, in the algorithm and upload this algorithm to the device. So uh, if you want to work with the square GeoFence, you just uh, set this latitude and uh, longitude for two points of the square. It's like a top left and the bottom right uh, points of the square. and uh, you uh, set here these uh, parameters of two, two points, latitude and longitude, and uh, actually that's all. This, uh, this branch will uh, switch uh, this flag in, in zone in one of the modes, and according to this flag, uh, we, will, uh, make, we will change settings for the device. And the second branch is uh, describes the round geofence. Again, you need to set the point of the center of this round and uh, and the radius for this round. Uh, this is in centimeters. So this uh, this branch describes geofence of with radius of of one kilometer around the point that's described here in these two parameters. Obviously, you don't need to use both these branches. You can like uh, use only the round geofence, and uh, in this geofence can be your uh, access point. So now you just need to improve this uh, algorithm for your task. You uh, set here coordinates of your uh, where the, your local access point is available, and uh, here. Uh, uh, you make uh, you need to set settings for your uh, Wi-Fi. So outside the geofence, when the uh, when the this flag is zero, the device switches to the uh, access point mode. It means that uh, outside the base, uh, the device is always set like access point and collects trying to collect the data from clients. So here uh, you set your parameters. Uh, for the access point, as you can see, the settings, uh, the settings, they are the same as you've seen in the configurator. Uh, so they are the same. And outside, uh, inside the geofence, when the device is in the base, uh, you uh, need to switch the device to the client mode. As you can see, uh, the client mode here is already set. And here you uh, type uh, parameters for the local access point. Uh, for the actual access point that you have. So it can be different settings. And uh, that's all. You just upload this algorithm, you uh, change it according to your requirements, and uh, upload this algorithm to a device via the USB, and uh, the device will automatically switch between client's mode and the access point mode, and uh, uh, the scheme will work uh, perfectly with, with any additional, uh, additional actions from your side. 
Uh, what else can I show you? We can actually also, yeah, I want to show you one more trick. Uh, this command. Back level by uh, space three. Uh, it gives us uh, more detailed troubleshooting. Okay, give me, oh, please give me clear this information. Yeah, about the Wi-Fi. Uh, for the Wi-Fi, uh, oh, sorry, I need to change settings. Deployment mode. Deployment. Yep. Yeah. Uh, with this uh, improved troubleshooting, uh, we can actually uh, check which uh, access point is available here uh, in the area because sometimes you just don't know uh, the name of the access point, you don't know the how strong the signal and here in the troubleshooting you can check uh, which access points are available in the area here oh, I see only two of them, yeah, one and two here we can see the name of the access point and the signal level so uh, this simple trick with troubleshooting, it allows you to check if uh, your antenna installed correctly because maybe you know that uh, here your access point will be set, here the antenna will be set and you can check uh, the actual uh, signal level of the uh, Wi-Fi connection. In my case, uh, 82 decibels is quite, uh, it's not good, not bad, but it can be, uh, it's quite okay for uh, client to, to the access point uh, communication. Not good, but it will work. I mean, minus 90 is quite poor signal. So uh, if you see something like this in your case, it's better to try to find a better place for your antenna. Uh, it's better to uh, maybe, uh, maybe check if the antenna uh, work correctly, maybe you can find a better place for the antenna or maybe you need to move your vehicles closer. So uh, again, this uh, troubleshooting, it allows you to uh, check what's going on with your equipment. Uh, this troubleshooting also available for uh, the device in the access point mode, but in this case, uh, you will see like the uh, words the going on between the devices. So again, during the test, it's easier to like collect all this data, save this to the file, and later if you have some issues, uh, you can just uh, save this information to the file, name it somehow, and later if you have some issues with the device, you just uh, can send this file and ask uh, if something can be done, what's going on, and everything else. We will explain you what's going on, as you can see. but. Actually, if you are familiar with the uh, English language, uh, it can be understood easily with, uh, because uh, if the device has some issues, can't connect, can't uh, upload something, uh, can't read micro SD card, all this information will be available here. Just will be uh, described all these all this familiar words. So again, do not forget to send this command, the backlog of page three. Uh, the configuration software knows this know this command you just need to start type the D E and uh, yeah here it is it's available space free back level free it uh, gives you more detailed uh, troubleshooting and uh, in case of Wi-Fi it's really <laughs> it's really helpful it's crucial because we see all this important information about the signal level about available access points or all the things so uh, please uh, use this it's uh, it's it helps so again uh, again, again, let me switch back to the presentation. So I believe uh, now I can answer questions. Please, uh, if you have some, uh, uh, please type. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I see that uh, uh, that uh, my team is sending you links to the Easy Logic templates. Please feel free to use these templates. They free. You can use them like a base of uh, your own solution. So maybe you have some questions, please. Uh, I'm ready to answer a question.
Uh, okay, I see a question. Uh, when uh, a device calls the an area nodes are covered by GSM, can this data be uploaded when it is in area with the GSM network? Obviously, yes. Uh, all devices, they uh, have memory enough for at least the week of uh, uh, offline work uh, and later when the device in the area with the uh, available GSM connection or Wi-Fi connection, doesn't matter for the device. Uh, this information obviously will be uploaded to the software, so once the device get online, uh, you will have this information. Uh, the device will upload this information to you. Uh, the only uh, possible issue is when the uh, Okay, sorry for these noises. Uh, the only possible uh, issue is when the device uh, is filled the memory and uh, it starts to rewrite the all this memory. So you can, uh, if the uh, if the device is flying for so for many uh, days, uh, it's possible that you can uh, lose some data. But basically, when the device gets online, it uploads the data. I didn't understand why do we need a uh, micro SD card? Okay, uh, again, uh, when uh, your device works in the client mode, uh, it uh, don't need the uh, micro SD card. It can work with the my internal memory. But the device that works like uh, uh, in the hub mode, in the access point mode, it stores the client's data uh, to the micro SD card. It's only way for storing the data because it can be uh, 10, 15 clients and uh, uh, the data can be uh, about one week of archive and so on. So it can be quite an impressive uh, list of parameters. So uh, you need uh, uh, you need to uh, use micro SD card uh, to store all this data. So hub is must be equipped with micro SD card because clients data is always stored to the micro SD card. Uh, clients, they same they can work with the internal memory. It's not an issue. You can use internal memory for clients because uh, clients should uh, save uh, their data uh, in internal memory. And uh, if you don't use uh, keys, if you don't use audio notifications, all the stuff, uh, yeah, you can work with the internal memory. It's not an issue. Okay, uh, this. Uh, this meeting will be available on our YouTube channel. I believe tomorrow it will be added to the our YouTube channel. If you are not familiar uh, with it, if you are not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please feel free to join it because uh, on this channel we have uh, very impressive tutorials like Canpro, like uh, Easy Logic School, and. Uh, uh, all uh, new features. Uh, I'm always trying to uh, record videos about our new features. So uh, if you want to be uh, like up to date, please uh, check our YouTube uh, channel, check our latest videos uh, to know about our new features. Because uh, I believe in the near future we will provide some interesting for you. Okay. Uh, Okay, I uh, also see the one question. Then, uh, this, the, is logic prevent the beacon from connecting data in the defined geographical area? Sure. Uh, when the device is in the client mode, when the device is uh, searching for the access point to upload the data, uh, it will not collect data from the clients. But again, uh, in this case, if, uh, if you want your clients to be able to upload data uh, via the Wi-Fi, even on base, it is easier to, uh, to it's actually can be two solutions. Uh, the first one is equip your clients with the uh, algorithm, with the same algorithm, but switch uh, between uh, different client modes, or or you can actually uh, set your uh, set set your uh, local access point and the hub uh, make settings the same. So uh, in this case. Clients, uh, instead of the hub device, will connect to the uh, local access point. Uh, it will not be an issue because uh, still all these access points, they have different MAC addresses. They uh, will not uh, interrupt each other. So, uh, yeah, the question is good, but it's not an issue. It's not a problem. Uh, it can be avoided by such problems. But yes, uh, you're actually correct.
uh, <laughs> uh, does the device need to be connected to an uh, access point to promote to perform data uh, sharing uh, if you're speaking about the client yeah the client uh, in like uh, the most part of the time is collecting data it's offline it's connect collecting data in the internal memory and uh, this Wi-Fi hub solution it allows the client to upload this archive that was collected for the some time uh, the device can upload this archive to the hub and later the uh, hub the collector device uh, will upload this archive uh, from the micro sd card to the software so later you will still get this information yeah so the uh, for the clients uh, 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 the Wi-Fi connection is crucial for the hub device. Uh, it is not necessary. It's one of the possible uh, scenario of uploading the data. Uh, in case that your hub device travels from time to time to the area with uh, available GSM network, you uh, don't have to use this algorithm. You don't have to use a uh, local uh, access point. Uh, the device will upload the data via the GSM network, uh, its own data, the client's data. It's not a problem. So GSM connect connection is still available for device. It's in most, uh, like, uh, basically it's the same device, but it uh, just equipped with the Wi-Fi module. Okay, uh, is this hub pro uh, process between devices, for example, device located in the area where there is no GSM, then the data will be transported by another device will move an area with the yeah it's one of the possible scenario yes exactly they like can uh, like a postman just uh, take the data from the client it's, that is always in the area with no connection you just, just don't have a chance uh, to upload the data and this this hub device is like take the data uh, brought it in the area with the gsm network and upload this data uh, to the server it's like a courier Because uh, there is uh, never such uh, situations when uh, in this area you are not uh, moving any vehicles. It should be at least fuel uh, delivered to the area. It, people should move uh, inside, outside. So at least some vehicles, they travel in this area and uh, they return to, to some other area where the, uh, some possible uh, communication channels should be available because you still need to communicate with the, you know, uh, uh, at least some communication channel available. It means that you can uh, set access point and uh, in this case, your hub device will uh, be able to upload data to the, uh, to the software with this Wi-Fi channel. Okay, maybe uh, more questions. Check the second type. No, no questions in the question chat, only in the chat. So, uh, since we you don't have uh, any more questions, uh, I think we can uh, finish this meeting. Uh, Thank you for your time. Thank you for your questions. I'm glad that uh, you're interested in this solution. Uh, if you still have some questions, please uh, feel free to contact our support team. Uh, you, I believe you all know uh, our support uh, email. We also have Skype. You, we have chat on our website. So please uh, feel free to contact us with all the uh, channels that is more convenient for you. We are always glad to uh, tell you about our solutions. And uh, please follow news because uh, there is something interesting, always something interesting for, for our clients. Uh, check our YouTube channel because I uh, always trying to create new videos for you, uh, some tutorials, some, uh, and also we have some interesting webinars from time to time. So again, <laughs> check our YouTube channels, follow the news. Uh, they hope this meeting was, uh, was helpful for you. Uh, Please feel free to use this solution because it's great. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for your time. Have a nice day.